does consuming more protein potentially help your immune system? It would make sense to think that if you're immunocompromised and you're getting sick, your body's going to demand more protein. I mean, if you put it together like a workout, you know, you work out with high intensity, you need more protein to recover, you kind of think along the same lines with getting sick. Well, to some degree it's true. But what we're going to discuss in this video is more about the individual amino acids and how they contribute to the overall effect of specific immune responses. Because that's what's kind of cool. You can almost cherry pick which amino acids you consume to at least get yourself a little bit more of a benefit or at least bring yourself up to the standard that your immune system needs to be at to properly be at its best and defend you. Okay, so before we get into all this, I'm going to talk briefly about what the innate immune system is and what the adaptive immune system is simply because it's it just needs to be discussed. Okay, first, the innate immune system. That's the immune system that you're essentially born with, right? That's your overarching kind of way to just fight pathogen from a very simple sense. Okay, so think of it like this. Pathogen enters your body. Your innate immune system just signals, goes to on. Okay, it's either off or on. And it triggers the release of all kinds of different things. Prostaglandins, inflammation, uh, fever, interferon, things to make you start fighting this pathogen. Okay, this is the immune system you're born with. And then there's sort of a secondary effect. Okay, leukocytes, white blood cells, things like that that go out and actually engulf the pathogen. And then there's sort of another effect after that of uh, immune cells that continue to patrol. Okay, but the reason that it's called the innate immune system is because it's not specific. It's just explosive. So then we look at what's called the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system is just like the name implies, it adapts, okay? It recognizes an illness that it's seen before, okay? And an antibody can hang out on the outside of an immune cell to basically identify something that it's seen before. So if you have a pathogen that you've uh, had before enter your body and you have an immune cell traveling around and it happens to have that sort of antibody on the, attached to the side of it, it's going to recognize it and it's going to know exactly how to deal with it. Now, where does this all come into play with protein? We're going to dive into that right now. But first, please do hit the red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so that you can always get notifications whenever we go live or whenever we post new videos, which is just about every single day. Let's go ahead and let's jump in. So the British Journal of Nutrition dove in a little bit regarding one specific amino acid called alanine. Okay, now what's interesting about alanine is it's not an essential amino acid, which means the body has the ability to create it. But when your body is in need of it, it is definitely in need of it. Now what's going on is your immune cells, for whatever reason, will have protein degradation that occurs within them. Now the question is, does this protein degradation occur just generally, or does it occur more when they're under load, like when the immune cells are actually working? The point is, the British Journal of Nutrition seems to believe that it has to do with the fact that alanine is a precursor to glucose when it comes down to the immune cells, meaning it potentially can fuel the immune cell or at least stop that protein degradation. Basically what happens is this immune cell, when it starts exerting more energy, it's going to need more energy. It's going to need more glucose. So it can break down material in and of itself. It can break down proteins into the aminos that it needs. And it seems to need alanine for whatever reason. Again, we don't really know this and it's a non-essential amino. So it's not something you typically have to get from the diet. But if your immune system is heavily taxed, it's sort of implied that alanine might help us out. However, that doesn't mean that you should just go jump in and buy a bunch of alanine. I mean, let's take a look at some of the other amino acids so we see how they play a role with the immune system. This next amino acid is known more so in the fitness community as one that would normally increase blood flow, which directly has a result with our immune system too, right? Okay, it's called arginine. Now, there's a two-part answer to why arginine is really, really important. Okay, for one, when it comes down to our white blood cells, arginine actually helps the proliferation and the effectiveness of the white blood cell. So arginine is involved in the formation of the molecules that serve this purpose on a white blood cell. So for example, when a white blood cell is traveling around and it's trying to recognize what a pathogen is, it has a little molecule that essentially rides on top of it, okay? So it's like the white blood cell is a horse and the little molecule is the actual warrior sitting on it and the warrior has to identify what the pathogen is. Well, it turns out that arginine is needed for the functionality of that molecule. 
So you get down to a really nitty gritty of it when it gets down to the literally molecular level. But let's expand a little bit more because if we look at nitric oxide synthase, which is required for uh, vasodilation and increased blood flow, that plays a big role within our immune system too. So think about our innate immune system. Think about how inflammation works for a minute. Okay, inflammation, we have an increase in blood flow, an increase of swelling to a given area. Well, that happens inside our body too, not just externally when we get an injury. So we have a lot more blood being delivered, which means we have more nitric oxide. The interesting thing is, is that some immune cells actually create their own nitric oxide. Okay, they create their own NO. That's how imperative it is. That's super important. But if we supplement with a little bit of arginine or we get it through proper protein consumption, we give our body the necessary mechanisms and tools that it needs to create that nitric oxide, to create that synthase, so it can actually deliver the blood flow and fight the good fight that it needs. Now, kind of a fun tip for you, arginine is less effective than taking, say, citrulline. Okay, citrulline converts to arginine within the body and you might get a more bioavailable form. But honestly, the best way is just to be getting it through a good I don't know, solid source of protein. Okay, let's move into the next one, which is one that a lot of people know about, glutamine. Glutamine has a two-part response within the immune system as well. Okay, the first thing I wanna to touch on is, remember, a good portion of our immune system is within our gut already, all right? Between 60 and 80% of our immune system is living within our gut, okay? A lot of our immune cells are there. Glutamine plays a very big role in terms of overall gut health, which could contribute to a healthier immune system to begin with. But that's not really what I want to focus on. Okay, what we want to look at here is how glutamine plays a role with the actual immune cell itself. So where glutamine comes in is it literally helps create white blood cells, helps create the immune cells. But I think even more importantly than that, it aids in the actual mobilization. So without glutamine, if you're deficient in glutamine, the white blood cells don't really know where to go as much or they don't get dispatched but they also aid in what's called phagocytosis. This is where you're actually engulfing a pathogen. So you can see each amino acid kind of has a different role in terms of support. Okay, some actually build the white blood cells, some help them dispatch, some help them build the molecules. It all plays a different role. What's interesting is we usually see glutamine being depleted whenever there are uh, extensive burns or whenever there's a bunch of you know, bigger wounds and injuries, right? A lot of times they'll say, if you have an open wound, taking glutamine can help support that. But interestingly enough, you also see glutamine levels suppressed a little bit when there's a high degree of endurance exercise, which is also coincidentally correlated with upper respiratory tract infections, right? So we kind of look at the big picture. We say, okay, when we're immunocompromised, glutamine might be one of the first things that ends up getting suppressed or ends up getting reduced. We used to always talk about, even in, in the uh, kind of the meathead muscle world, we used to say, okay, if you take in glutamine after a workout, it could potentially keep your resistance from getting super low. So there's a lot of different rabbit holes that you can go down with that. The fact is, again, good quality, well-rounded protein, you're going to end up getting that glutamine in. I don't necessarily think you need to supplement specifically with glutamine unless you're doing extensive, extensive endurance work and you're also immunocompromised at the same time. Here's where things get a little bit interesting though. When we start getting into the branch chain amino acids, for example, isoleucine, well, then we see an interesting effect on the immune system. Okay, when isoleucine or some of the other branched chain amino acids are lower, like we're deficient in them, we, we see a significant decrease in immune system function. However, when you supplement with branched chain amino acids, it doesn't seem to increase the immune system. So again, it's demand driven. That's what's interesting. It seems to be like everything in the world of protein is demand driven. And what I mean by that is, if the immune system is demanding it, then absolutely we need it. But taking in more protein is not going to give you a better immune system. What makes things difficult is we do not know when our immune system is really being demanded a lot of, right? I mean, we could feel tired, we could feel fatigued, but when you look at the case of like the amino acids that are the branch chain, the major, major players in the amino acid world, they're just kind of just, well, if you're deficient, then your immune system suffers. But if you're up to snuff, then your immune system is fine. But if you have more, it doesn't really do a whole lot. So it's just important to get enough protein in, but don't try to stuff yourself with protein. It's more like these esoteric amino acids actually have a more powerful role. But I want to dive in more because then there's one of my favorite amino acids out there called taurine. And taurine is something that you can supplement with individually that can play a big part in your immune system. So let's check this one out. So taurine is what is called a conditionally essential amino acid, meaning it is essential, but it's also the largest sort of uh, free roaming amino acid, okay? It makes up a lot of different parts of our body, okay? Ranging from heart tissue all the way down, of course, to the immune system. So it's really an interesting amino acid in and of itself. 
Now our taurine gets kind of interesting, but at the same time, really, really cool, is it binds with something called hypochlorous acid. Okay, now it creates what's called taurine chloramine, which has really powerful oxidative effects within the body. Now, when it comes down to the immune system and inflammation, this taurine chloramine has a very powerful regulatory effect. Okay, so think of this. Your immune system reacts to something. So inflammation levels go up. Okay, well, when your inflammation levels go up, this is a good thing to fight an immune response or to fight an illness, right? Your immune response. But imagine if the inflammation just continues on. Okay, and you think about the case of um, different infections. A lot of times the issues that you face are an overreaction of inflammation. The cytokine storm, so much in the way of cytokines and chemical reactions that occur that you're actually feeling sick from the inflammation from your body's immune system result itself. Well, we have pro-inflammatory mediators that help control that. Think about it, there's a signaling device that's always at play to say, hey, you're overreacting too much, or hey, you need to react more. Well, if we don't have the, the mediators there, then our immune system can just overreact. Well, it turns out that when chlorine is in, in its bound form, this taurine chloramine, it can help modulate that. It helps regulate the immune system. So believe it or not, it doesn't really play as big of a role in terms of fighting off something, but it plays a bigger role in making sure that your immune system doesn't overreact. So it's pretty darn cool. When you couple that with some of these other aminos we're talking about, that's where things get, I don't know, pretty darn cool. I think you're kind of seeing the gist in general though, just getting good amounts of protein in. I do want to stop for one second and just say if you haven't already, I encourage you to check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Now, the reason that I mention that is because I have specific bundles of groceries through Thrive Market because I have a really good partnership with them with this channel. So I have like a keto box, I have a fasting box, I have a thyroid support box, all with foods that I would recommend. So it's like you're going grocery shopping with me. It's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Anyhow, so Thrive Market's a big sponsor of this channel. They are a huge supporter. They make all this content possible, but the best thing is they've got a lot of good stuff that can get shipped directly to your doorstep. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So highly, highly, highly recommend you check them out for things like collagen, which we're gonna talk about a little bit, for things like your higher protein snacks that can go in the pantry. Uh, they even have some options in terms of meat and fish and stuff like that too. So definitely check them out after you finish watching this video. Okay, now here's the part that I get really excited about, and that's the world of glutathione. Now, glutathione itself is not an amino acid, okay? Glutathione is a small protein peptide, okay? So it's made up of specific aminos. It's made up of cysteine, then it's made up of glycine, and then it's made up of glutamate, okay? So it's these different aminos. Now, typically, glutamate, you're gonna have plenty of within the body, okay? You're also gonna have a good amount of glycine if you're getting a good amount of like uh, collagen coming in your diet and stuff like that. But let's talk about glutathione for just a second before we get into the chemical makeup or the amino makeup of it. Okay, glutathione is your body's mastering antioxidant. So here's what it does in terms of the immune system. The immune system goes to work, but it naturally is going to create waste, okay? So the immune system, those immune cells, because they're working hard, they create a lot of reactive oxygen species. Now, an antioxidant's job is to donate an electron so that it neutralizes these free radicals. Okay, so envision your immune system going to work, going to war, and it's creating a bunch of waste. Okay, so because it's going to war, there's just a bunch of casualties of war in terms of just waste. Well, that waste has to get, has to get cleaned up. That's where glutathione comes in. Now, there's all these different antioxidants you can take and things like that, but glutathione is naturally endogenously created. And yes, it can travel around. Yes, it's in the mitochondria of just about every cell, but we also have it at the liver level. And this is where it's really, really, really important for you for your immune system. Okay, so at the liver level, its job is to essentially take these toxins, neutralize them, and allow them to be packaged in a way that your body can excrete them. However, when we're immunocompromised or when our immune system is working in overdrive, we deplete our glutathione stores. Now, generally speaking, you can't just take glutathione supplementation. You can, but here's the problem. Since glutathione is just three aminos, okay, again, cysteine, glycine, and glutamate, what's gonna happen when you consume that? Okay, when you consume that orally, it's going to just get broken down into its individual amino acids and it's gonna go into the labral pool just like it's supposed to. That's the biggest problem. Now, you can go down a rabbit hole with different glutathione supplements. That's not what this video is about. Okay, so what ends up happening is your glutathione levels never really restore or they do indirectly. Now, once again, glutamate is pretty easy to get your hands on, okay, as is uh, glycine. Again, if you're consuming collagen and things like that, I, which I do recommend you consume. But cysteine ends up becoming somewhat of the issue, okay? Now, cysteine is going, you're going to get it if you're consuming good amounts of protein, but the hard part is cysteine, you usually need to consume a lot of what is called methionine, 
So I'm going to go down a rabbit hole for just a second, but if you consume a bunch of methionine, then you end up potentially increasing your levels of what are called homocysteine within the body. Homocysteine is immunosuppressive in and of itself and is a contributor to cardiovascular disease. You've probably heard you don't want high homocysteine levels. So what I'm saying here is if you just consume a bunch of meat, a bunch of muscle meat, a bunch of protein, traditional protein, you're going to get all the amino acids that you need, but you're going to have so much in the way of this methionine that you could be causing, could be causing a potentially negative issue down the line. So if you have this collagen coming in, then you at least get an abundance of glycine, which can help the metabolism and the recycling of homocysteine. Long story short, glycine aids in the overall recycling of that homocysteine. So you're not going to have the toxic effect. So what does that all mean? Because I know that's complicated gobbledygook. It means that glutathione is dependent on methionine in an indirect way. And that's fine. So you're going to have to increase protein to make sure your glutathione stores are good. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're getting glycine in to balance the methionine. And that's just super important for your overall health when you're looking at your immune system. Now, you can also take things like N-acetylcysteine and stuff like that to support your glutathione levels. But it's sort of the secondary uh, immune system that we need to think about. If the immune system does the work. We still have to think about how we clear it all out, right? So lastly, I just want to wrap up with collagen for just a second. Now, collagen is obviously not just one amino acid. It's a kind of protein but it links directly, of course, with our gut mucosal layer. Okay, so the Journal of Clinical Pathology did publish a study that found in, in subjects that had irritable bowel syndrome, where they have inflammatory bowel disease, they had significantly less collagen type four concentrations within their gut. Okay, what that tells us is that whenever there's inflammation within the gut, it could be breaking down that collagen. Now that collagen builds up that mucosal layer, which if we break down that mucosal layer, then of course we have a weaker gut lining, which means that our immune system is not going to be as protected. It's not going to do its job as well. So collagen does play a very, very important role when you look at things like that. So I end with reminding you that like 60 to 80% of your immune system, your immune cells are living in your gut. So you should be doing what you can to take care of the gut. And that's probably the strongest way that you can just support your immune system in general. Obviously we can go down different rabbit holes there, but as always, thank you for watching and thank you for sticking with me as I'm filming in a different capacity here in my studio during these wild times. I'll see you tomorrow.